excited to be here today. I kind of want to tell you a little bit more of the, I don't want to say basics, because we don't really know anything about my syndrome. I have this very rare syndrome that only two other people in the world, including myself, that we know all have. Basically, what this syndrome causes is that I cannot gain weight. Yes, it does sound as simple as it is. I can eat absolutely whatever I want, whenever I want, and I won't really gain any weight. And that is the benefit of not being able to gain weight. And there are a lot of benefits to being visually impaired. Now a lot of you might be thinking that Lizzy, how in the world can you say that there are benefits when you can only see out of one eye? Well, let me tell you what the benefits are because they are great. I wear contacts, contacts, half off contacts. When I wear my reading glasses, half off prescription. If somebody is annoying me, be rude, stand on my right side. If I cannot even bear, I don't even know you're standing there. Right now, if I'm standing with this, I have no idea that there is hope side of the room. Even though there are really amazing things that have come from this scene, things have also been very difficult for me as you can imagine. Growing up, one of the biggest things that I have to deal with is something I am pretty sure most of you in this room have dealt with before. Bullying. I have to deal with bullying a lot. But since I was raised very normally, when I first started kindergarten, I had no idea that I looked different. No clue. I think of it as a big slap of reality for a five-year-old because I went to school the first day with my backpack that looked like a turtle shell because it was bigger than And I went up to this little girl and smiled at her. And she looked up at me like I was a monster. Like I was the scariest thing she had ever seen. My first reaction was, she is really rude. Because in my mind, I was still a very cool kid. I thought that the day would get better, but unfortunately, it didn't. It got kind of worse and worse. A lot of people wanted to have absolutely nothing to do with me. And I didn't understand why. Why? What did I do? I didn't do anything to them. So I had to go home and ask my parents and said, what is wrong with me? Why don't they like me? And my parents sat me down and they said, that Lizzie, the only thing that is different about you is that you are smaller than the other kids. You have a syndrome, but this is not the way to define who you are. I want you to ask yourselves in your heads right now, what defines you? Who are you? Is it where you come from? Is it your background? Is it your friends? What is it? What defines who you are as a person? When I was in high school, I found this video, unfortunately, that somebody had posted of me labeling me the world's ugliest woman. There were four million views in this video, eight minutes long, no sound, thousands of comments. People saying, Lizzie, please, Please just do the world a favor. Put a gun to your head and kill yourself. Think. Think about that. If people told you that, if strangers told you this, I cried my eyes out, of course, and I was ready to fight back when something had came to my head. I thought that I'm just going to leave them alone because my life was in my hands and I want to be grateful of the things that I do have instead of being upset of the things that I don't. I may not be able to see out of one eye, but I can see out of the other. I might get sick a lot, but I have a really nice hair. But then I thought, am I going to let the people who call me a monster or who call me ugly define me? 
No. I am going to let my goals and my success and my accomplishments be the things that define me, not my outer appearance. So I told myself that I am going to work so hard and show them that you know what, tell me those negative things. I am going to turn it around and use it as a ladder to my up to my goals. And so that's what I did. I told myself I wanted to be a motivational speaker, I wanted to write a book, write in college and have my own career. Eight years later, here I am, standing in front of you people doing motivational speaking. The first thing, I accomplished it. Secondly, I wanted to write a book. In a couple of weeks, I will be submitting the manuscript to my third book. I wanted to graduate college and I just finished college. I wanted to have lost my own career and I think that I am doing really well with it, considering the fact that when I decided I wanted to be a motivational speaker, I went home, sat in front of my laptop, went to Google and typed in how to be a motivational speaker. I worked hard. I used the people who told me that I couldn't do this to motivate me. I used their negativity to light my fire to keep going. Use that. Use that negativity that you have in your life to make yourself better. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, you will win. Now I would like to end with asking you again. I want you to leave here and ask yourselves in your heads, what defines you? But remember, it's great, starts here. Thank you.